joining me today for this presentation on life hacking with floating. Uh, my name is Sean McCormick. I'm a Float Center founder. I'm a life coach. I'm a podcast host. I'm a performance coach. I've worked with big organizations and high performers and I love floating. I, I absolutely do. This is really a pleasure to be presenting today. I was uh, in attendance at the float con in 2011 in Gothenburg, Sweden. And uh, I don't think that I got a star for that one, but I think this is like my fourth or fifth. Um, I'm the founder of Float Seattle. We opened the doors in 2012. And two years ago, I sold those both locations to two incredible people, Andrew Lopnow and Dean Paris, who now have served over 60,000 60, floats and uh, added a third location, just like doing an amazing job. I, I love floating so much and it is such a useful tool for personal development and that's really what my specialty is as a biohacker and presenter um, at various companies and organizations working with people that I do, I really do lean on floating to, to really take uh, personal development and achievement to the next level. How can we be better? Um, what we're not gonna be talking about today is psychedelics and floating. We're not going to be talking about extrasensory perception and floating or peak experiences in floating. Um, I just like these topics and I wanted to just like throw out that we're not going to be talking about these, but they are they are sort of tangentially relevant to the work that uh, that, that I'm going to be talking about today. So see you later about that. So let me let me define the term. So what is what is life hacking? Life hacking is how I think of using tools, techniques, modes of thought and practices to be your best self. At, at the heart of the work that I do, I'm trying to help people be their best in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of work. And what that requires is high impact behaviors, high impact practices that can help people grow really, really quickly. You may be familiar with the term biohacking or not. If you're a Joe Rogan fan, uh, you probably are. If you know who Dave Asprey is, you know Aubrey Marcus has spoken um, here at the conference before. And uh, basically, what are the things that we can do in our lives to help us develop the fastest? And life, uh, when it comes to life hacking, floating is certainly at the very top of that list. And there's a good reason for that. Number one is because of what we know about the default mode network. You just heard from Justin Feinstein about uh, his amazing research at Liber. And for, for a float center owner a couple of years ago, uh, it was really a big deal to be able to point scientifically at the default mode network. We know that the default mode network is affected during floating the same way that it's affected and really sort of diminished, more porous, uh, the same way in other altered states of consciousness. Work with psychedelics, meditation, ecstatic dance, uh, religious experiences, it all helps us um, see ourselves in a brand new way. That sort of rigid, oh, this is who I am and this is how I think, all of that begins to soften um, because of what happens during a float session to the default mode network. There are a couple of really key things that happen to the default mode network. You can redefine the ego and the self. The way that you see yourself is oftentimes not related to uh, your own thoughts. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit later about the subconscious mind. But basically, we know that we can have control and influence over our sense of self inside the float tank. We can actually get better with some intention and some practices that I'm going to show you a little bit later in this talk. But we can't do this work watching Netflix. We can't do this watching YouTube videos or or uh, even in the shower where all of our good ideas come from, this is really the best place. Meditation is probably, I think, the closest corollary in work with psychedelics to be able to redefine our sense of self. 
but we know that the default mode network is softened and more porous so that we can begin to develop ourselves. What this also does in a float tank session is it opens us up to a new sense of self. You know what? No. To greater potential. This is how we hack our minds. This is how we hack our bodies. This is how we hack our sense of self. When, when we are going into a float session, and I really think of floating as sort of two different ways. You can either have passive floats or you can have active floats. And in a passive float session, oftentimes you just need to get away, you just lay back and breathe and whatever happens, happens. Totally awesome, we've all been there. You just need to get away from the world and relax and let go. Um, our brain bounces around. Maybe we focus on our breath a little bit. Our eyes are usually closed. That's fantastic. But when you're doing an active float, you're actually going into the float tank with an intention, with a purpose. That's more active. And that's what this is focusing on. When we are going in with agency and purpose and intention, you really are opening yourself up to developing yourself, developing your life, crafting your life in a really, really meaningful way um, through an active float. And the reason that that's so effective in a float tank is because of the, the porousness of the default mode network. You all have felt this before. You come out and you feel like a new person. You know, For most of you, for a lot of you that, that run float centers, you've talked to people who've had these profound experiences. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I was, I was hiding this one thing. I didn't, I didn't think of myself in this way uh, ever before. Like, I feel like a brand new person. I feel like a kid again. I feel refreshed and renewed. And that is essential for hacking your life. That is essential for developing yourself into the person that you want to be, is to like create a little bit of space to open yourself up to a greater potential. The other reason why floating is so great for hacking your life is because you are scheduling for time, space, and depth. The world is a nutty place. We are, it's nuttier now than maybe it's ever been. There's a ton of information coming at us. It's an election year, there's a pandemic. It's just, it's bananas. We are so inundated by external sensory input that we don't make the time to have some time to ourself, to create some time and some space and some depth for ourselves. So just the act of, of booking a float the act of scheduling a weekly or you know two times a week float practice actually is empowering in and of itself. The same way going to the gym is empowering to the self. You know these practices where you're actually caring for yourself, loving yourself, honoring yourself. Um, that that's uh, it's encouraging and inspiring. Um, one of my clients who is uh, a, a CEO at a tech company. That's what I'll say. Um, he's a regular meditator and he was having problems at work and in his life, in his social life, and he, was, he couldn't focus. He was a great meditator, been meditating for a long time. And I said, hey, you have to start floating because the meditation, your, the, the groove you're in in meditation is no longer effective for you. And as, like, after that first float experience, everything started to make way. Uh, uh, he was be able to. He was able to focus more clearly. He got recovery, and um, he was actually able to activate his parasympathetic system. Um, and what it became over time was this practice that he really took very seriously. He protected really, really seriously, so that he knew, like, hey, I'm going to do something for me. I have all these people that rely on me, but um, I need to do something for me. How do I make that happen? So what you can do when you're, when you're scheduling uh, a float is um, in creating the space is processing new awareness. Stuff happens in our lives. 
it really oftentimes surprises us when we lose a loved one or get divorced or have some sort of traumatic event. It just, it, it, catch, it catches us by surprise, it always does. And we rarely spend the time to actually process these emotions that we have. How are you responding to this big life-changing event? For this one client of mine, um, he was going through a divorce and um, by making time to think and to be, period, was a big, big deal for him. This level of self-care was helping him create the sort of life and lifestyle that he wanted. He was creating time to process. A lot of folks don't ever process this traumatic, these traumatic things that come up in their life. You know, maybe they'll do it like in the bath or at night before they go to bed, but that's not, that's not enough. We, we are not designed to be going as fast as we go all day, every day, redlining all the time and then just quickly go to sleep and wake up and do it again. You know, we, we, we've evolved to sit around a fire and to have time sitting by streams and just to relax and ground down to process the things that are going on in our life. So once you are able to process some of the things that are going on in your life, then you can integrate. You can integrate the things. Integrate new awareness. When you're, when you're working with a, with a life coach or performance coach or a therapist and you're seeing yourself in a new way and you're combining that with flotation therapy, what you're doing is you're finding ways to come to terms with what's going on in your life. So not only do you, can you see like, oh, this is what's happening for me, holy cow. Now it's like, well, how do I feel about that? How do I feel about what's going on in my life? How much agency do I feel? After you've integrated, after you've made, um, after you've become aware of it, after you've actually acknowledged that this stuff is, is happening in your life, then you can integrate uh, it into your being to think really critically. How do I feel about this divorce? How do I feel about my job? How do I feel about my life? And um, by scheduling that, you become more intentional. After that, then it is applying. You see, I'm, I'm looking at my notes there. Then you can apply it. Uh, what is the, what's the next plan? What's the next move? Where do I go from here? Again, it can't happen on the couch watching Netflix. This stuff has to happen when you are um, calm and relaxed. You know, oftentimes it takes us 45, 50, 55 minutes uh, to kind of go through the day in our float sessions and then it's in like the last few minutes of a 60 minute 90 minute float that's when things start to come together that's when it's like oh my gosh I've now I've now processed some of these things I've 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 integrated them into into my life and my awareness um, but then what am I supposed to do what do I do next in fact my decision to sell the businesses sell my float centers came obviously during a float session when I realized that I needed to uh, direct my attention to the next chapter in my life. Um, it never would have come to me if, if I hadn't had that intention um, and, and, and made some decisions about what I wanted out of my life. You know, obviously working with a coach or a therapist um, or, or a shaman is a really good idea uh, and floating just enhances that level of intention. So. Um, You've got the default mode network, you've got scheduling time and space, and now we're gonna talk about some of these techniques that I was, no, I want the blue one. We're gonna talk about some of these techniques that I do with my clients that work, that are amplified, way more effective in the float tank. So we're gonna be talking about programming the subconscious. I've done it's hard to talk and write at the same time. Um, I've done presentations on programming or reprogramming, not the human biocomputer, like John Lilly. Big shout out, John Lilly. Um, but the subconscious mind. You may not know this, maybe you do. Most of our decisions in our, our, our awareness of, of life itself, 98% of our awareness in the world 
is happens in our subconscious mind. Um, that subconscious mind is developed between the ages of zero to seven. So before we turn eight or nine, we are absorbing culture, absorbing how to be because we are technically in this hypnagogic state and we just learn how to be in the world from our parents. And this subconscious mind picks up especially on the really negative aspects of ourself. Uh, in the amygdala, th which is the subconscious mind, it's very emotional. It doesn't know what's good or bad. It just feels these feelings. And most people don't know that we can actually use these techniques in the float tank that I'm about to explain to change our subconscious mind. Yeah. To actually make major changes for ourselves and reprogram the, the way that we operate in the world. It's a, it's a, and here's how. So here's one thing that all of you guys can do is in life coaching world, it's called ants. These are automatic negative thoughts. What, one thing that you can do, we all have these, is purge these, get, get them out. Um, do you say, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm unlovable, that'll never work, uh, why can't I get this right, why are you so stupid? These automatic negative thoughts come from our subconscious mind that keep us safe. It comes from the ego. It keeps us in a box. It keeps us small. It keeps us um, really tied to our subconscious, which is keeping us little and scared because that's what the subconscious does. That's what the ego does. It just wants to keep us safe. So when you write out these automatic negative thoughts, get them out on paper. What you can do in the float tank when you are the most suggestible to yourself, you can literally talk yourself into just about anything, especially inside of a float session. You can reframe these negative thoughts. So um, you're not good enough can be reframed into um, I'm working to improve. Um, you are totally unlovable can be reframed into I am actively open to being loved. When you change those automatic negative thoughts through reframing in the float tank, repeating them over and over and over, because you are oh, so highly suggestible in that state of consciousness in, the, in, the, in a float, then you come out of the float and you actually do feel a little bit different. You do this over time and the results are incredible. I've done this with with several Amazon clients who are totally fried out of their brains and it seems hokey and corny, but this stuff works. So reframing these negative thoughts are really, really effective. Another thing that you can do is self-hypnosis. I had the pleasure of, of working with interviewing uh, Bruce Lipton on the podcast, on the Optimal Performance Podcast, and we talked, we spent like 40 minutes talking about these sorts of techniques to reprogram the subconscious mind. Um, Dr. Roderick Bory, who was one of the very early adopters, you know, 60s and 70s uh, to uh, rest, uh, sensory deprivation, um, out of New York, talks about how he used to do hypnotherapy sessions with clients through an intercom in the float tank. And what he was able to do is because these clients of his were so highly suggestible, they were able to break through these blockages that they had in their life. Well, you can do that for yourself. When, and here's how you do it. So what you'll do is you'll write out, type out 15 or 20 minutes of positive affirmations to yourself and then you just listen to them in the float tank. That's how this works. So, Sean, you are an excellent presenter. You are an effective life coach. You are a loving father. You are working hard to continuously improve. You are worthy of uh, trust and, and admiration. You are, you are continuing to affect people's lives in a positive way. Whatever that sounds like for you, write that out record it in a voice recorder, and then play that in the float tank. Just play it. It works like crazy. 
even if you nod off to sleep, which happens from time to time, you are still downloading through th through that highly suggestible theta state into a new awareness of yourself. You're hacking your life, hacking your brain, hacking your subconscious mind. Um, I, I did this through a pretty tumultuous time in my life a couple of years ago, I guess like four years ago. And it was effective at just like once a week for the first part of my float. I would keep my eyes open and listen to my self-hypnosis inside of the, uh, of the float pod in that case. And I would come out and I would feel lighter and stronger and more confident. We could all use a little boost like this right now and this is a really crazy effective technique. Some other techniques fall into the realm of energy psychology. Energy psychology refers to techniques that you can use on yourself to improve. One of them is tapping. Uh, you know, um, do a DuckDuck Go search or, or YouTube search for EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. It's called tapping, where you can actually process trauma and break through blockages in your life that you're storing in your body by tapping through meridians and um, using certain terminology that will help you break through this, these sticking points. So you can, you can look, take a look at EFT. You can also um, do uh, progressive energy uh, up and down your body. You just call this energy flow. But here's the big idea. So we, there are lots of these techniques. If you wanna learn more about these, you can ask me about these after this session. These are, um, I'll be available for, for the Q&A right after this. And there is no end to the work that you can do on yourself in a float. With a regular float practice, there is no end. Consciousness is infinite. You are an infinite being of love and light and truth. And you can change yourself. You can hack your life. You can be a better person. And the float tank is really the best place to do that. It's the most effective. You're the most open to change while you're doing it. And um, I've been advocating for it. And it's, uh, it's, really, it's really a cool honor it's, uh, to be here and giving this, this talk to you guys today. Um, I, again, I'll be around to talk a little bit more about this. But when you look at combining flotation therapy with um, cognitive behavioral therapy or life coaching or you know, gestalt therapy, and then working afterward on this additional, um, these additional practices, uh, you're gonna change. You're gonna improve in your life, and that's a beautiful thing. That's all that we can. That's all that we can do. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for sticking around. I hope this was interesting to you, and I look forward to talking to all of you after after the session. Thank you. Um, um, um.